Hello everybody. Next up we host Crystal Palace at what is likely to be an incredibly rare Saturday 3pm kickoff for us this season. I suggest you don't get used to it. No engineering works in the locality to speak of, save some stuff on the lower reaches of the DLR. But as ever, check before you leave. So, Palace then, from Croydon. I hate Croydon. I may have mentioned this in the past. The former Mrs Percy came from there, which is justification enough for demolishing the whole place on the grounds of taste, even though the place itself were not a complete hole already. Of late, I've had occasion to drive through the place on a regular basis en route to somewhere much better. I have noted that both drivers and pedestrians seem to have a death wish in that benighted borough. Now, obviously, they have to deal with the fact that they live in Croydon. However, much as I would love to help, I have a new car and I have no wish to damage my paintwork in assisting with some quest for euthanasia, given the many years of no claims I've built up. If you live in Croydon, there are many organisations that can help. Go bother one of them. Uh, yes, uh, back to Palace. Well, so far this season, they've just got the one point. Uh, a 3-0 thumping at Stamford Bridge was followed up with a goalless draw at home to New Boys Brentford. For what it's worth at this time of the season, this has left them in 14th spot as the goal difference meet in a sandwich comprising Southampton in 13th and Leeds in 15th. They were in something called the second round of the League Cup. Mm, no, me neither. The other night, losing 1-0 at Watford, the winner being notched by former hammer Ashley Fletcher. Since last season, they have, of course, had a change of manager. Roy Hodgson, although far too young to qualify for a berth here at the Avram Grant Olympic Rest Home for the Bewildered, Nevertheless, elected to retire at the end of last term, and he was replaced by Neil Ruddock's old sparring partner, Patrick Vieira. Vieira arrives after a six-month break from management, having been relieved of his duties at Nice, following a five-game losing streak in the league, plus exits from both domestic cups and elimination from the Thursday night league. Vieira has pledged to instill a more attractive style of play at Palace. Given the composition of the squad over the last couple of seasons, it's a pledge he may have his work cut out to honour. Without the introduction of new players, he will find that difficult. The fast arrival on the transfer list may not even have set foot on these shores yet. American midfielder Jacob Montez, who came in from Treasure Coast Tritons, yes really, or possibly New England Revolution, it's a bit vague as to which of the clubs in the franchise system actually owned his contract, Portland Timbers are somewhere involved as well. And Daisy, the beautiful personal assistant, from whom I no longer have to remain socially distant, simply couldn't be bothered to work out what was going on. Especially as the player doesn't actually qualify for a visa in this country, which is something that led Palace to shift him over to Belgian second-tier outfit Vasland Beveren. Since the player was signed by Palace on a one-year deal, it could be that he never sets foot in this country at all if they elect not to renew his contract. Odd one, that. They did sign two proper players during the window. They shelled out £18 million for England under-21 defender Mark Gay, I think he pronounced that, who found himself surplus to requirements at Chelsea. There are apparently lots of sell-on clauses and Chelsea have also retained the right to match any offer made for the player in the future, should he turn out to be a bit better than they thought. As is common with many players who technically remain by Chelsea, he spent most of the last season and a half on loan, abroad. Swansea, to be precise. He was never present in the league and was part of the team that went down to Brentford in the playoffs. He started both games for the Glazers this term. They spent a similar amount on Danish centre-back Joachim Christian Andersen. £17.5 million plus a potential £2.5 million in add-ons was sent to Lyon in return for the Danish international services. Andersen, who was played by Danny Kaye in the 1952 fictionalised musical version of his life, actually spent last season on loan at Fulham. And, having moved across the Croydon, will no doubt be fully aware that fairy tales aren't real. The defender's been capped seven times by the Danes, including a sub-appearance in the Euro semi-final against England. They also brought in one of Chelsea's loan stock, in the form of Conor Gallagher. The 21-year-old midfielder has yet to make an appearance in Chelsea's first eleven, though he does have a Thursday night league winner's medal, having been on the bench when the pensioners won that competition a few years back. He has spent time out on loan at Charlton and Swansea and played 30 times last season as West Brom added a relegation to the Allardyce CV. On the injury front, they've got four under treatment at the moment. Olise has a back problem. Eze has a calf issue. Uh, Milosevic, how oh, have you pronounced that? He won't be around for personal re reasons. And Ferguson has an Achilles problem. 
though at time of writing all that may be due to an update. And so to the wild and wacky world of association football. Reports suggest that Harry Kane is elected to stay at Spurs, citing the fans as the reason for staying. Yeah, really. Nothing to do with the fact that the only club with the sort of money to meet the inflated price tag couldn't be bothered then, eh, Harry? Elsewhere, serial moaner Jurgen Klopp had another go at the one group of people he ought to be grateful to, moaning after the match against Burnley that referees were letting too many fouls go. Actually, for once I can see his point. By letting the game flow, referees are negating the prime Anfield tactic of kicking players up in the air 10 yards either side of the halfway line. And of course, that will never do. On the world scene, FIFA have been awarded £200 million worth of pilfered funds confiscated from corrupt officials who'd been brought before the beak. Sort of puts the £2.50 reluctantly charged by the Premier League to the so-called big clubs and spurs for their attempt to dump all over the game in their attempts to enrich themselves into some sort of perspective, doesn't it? Let's move on to us. Freshly unemployed Tony Cotty is the latest ex-player to get on board the PAI role, or payroll. See what I did there? Cotty's statement was all about achieving goals, the first of which is, and I quote, getting fans to believe in this bid. Now, getting former players to do PR is one thing. However, when it comes down to the world of takeovers and high finance, I sort of know the difference between a prospectus and a PR statement. And the nature of the latter doesn't change simply because the person reading it out used to play in claret and blue. With a few notable exceptions, footballers aren't exactly noted for their intellect. The story Alan Pardew used to tell about setting up Anton Ferdinand with a sports psychologist to work on his focus was kind of par for the course. Anton forgot to go. So if Anton, bless you, were to tell me that he'd been through the business plan and had seen all the projections, and he were to tell me that they were both viable and sustainable and would involve substantial investment into the playing side of the club, I think I might ask for a second more qualified opinion. No offence to any involved, but it will take more than a few presumably scripted words from the Ferdinands and Cotty to get me on side. On the pitch, Monday night was a bit special, once we got in. Now I'll admit I arrived later than I usually do. Having taken advantage of the relaxation of social distancing rules to escape for a long weekend in the company of one's beautiful personal assistant, a number of delays on one's return to the mainland meant that I pitched up a mere 10 minutes before kick-off. Now, in the past, this has been no problem. One has pretty much just walked in. However, walking around the ground, the queues for the B block of turnstiles were absolutely horrendous. Things were better at A, which is where I go in, but even then the queues didn't seem to move for a good 10 minutes. Not sure what the reasons were, but one would assume that there were a combination of technical issues and an unfamiliarity on the part of supporters as to how things actually worked. I did see people whose barcodes wouldn't scan, and I also saw supporters struggling to fit the larger telephone into the card reader. One hopefully helpful suggestion for the stewards, if there are any reading this, is that if someone does need assistance and you need to check tickets or phones, if you could take the person to one side rather than conducting all the checks right in front of the gate, that might help with the flow rather than blocking off a whole turnstile just for the sake of one person. On the pitch, we were well worth the thrashing that was dished out. The first goal was a breathtaking move reminiscent of, dare I say it, the West Ham way. The sending off for all Rogers bleating was definitely a red. My Leicester season ticket holding friend, the lovely Stephanie, was a little more pragmatic in her assessment of the situation than Rogers, bemoaning the fact that Perez had not stayed around and argued long and hard with Oliver for the decision, thus somehow avoiding a longer ban. I think it's fair to say Stephanie's not a Perez fan. The second goal was funny, though it should be noted that not all that long ago Antonio might have tried something daft to score himself. The pass to set up Ben Rahm has showed an intelligence he hasn't always displayed in the past. Then it was all about Antonio. The third was a marvellous finish from the striker. We may yet make a full back out of him one day, you know. I think we'll draw a veil over the celebration, however. There is some history, though. Neil Ruddock once considered doing something similar years ago, but was informed that the worldwide shortage of cardboard that a celebration would cause might damage the paper industry for years to come. Antonio's second goal was a striker full of confidence and in wonderful form. Whatever it was Mr Moyes said to him at the interval, could we make a request for him to say it again before kick-off in future? Amate and Sionchu will be in therapy for months after that second 45. As an aside, it might be a good idea to hold on to the cutout and post it to the Leicester training ground in advance of the return fixture just to give them the willies. That's of course assuming Tottenham haven't come in in the meantime and paid £20 million for the cutout to play alongside Kane. There's no new injury worries to consider. 
Well, we do have two on the official list where we only had one before, but that's due to the statisticians who monitor these things, having belatedly discovered that Winston Reed is still on the books to join Masuaku on the physio's couch. So at the prediction then. Well, all the noises coming from Vieira along the lines of them needing to be more ruthless in the final third. And reports from the Watford game suggest that they were, by and large, the more dominant side. There again, it was Watford. However, the fact is they have gone three games without troubling the goals four column. And if we can get anywhere near Monday night's performance, I wouldn't have thought they could live with us. So the £2.50 I confiscated from the last person to walk out in front of my car while driving through Croydon will this week be wagered on a home win when I next turn up at the premises of Winston, the turf accountant. Let's call it 3-1 to us, shall we? Enjoy the game. Yes. <laughs> Big knees up Mother Brown, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm regularly on the general discussion page. There's always someone who's got some information, so I love it, yeah. yeah. It's great. Yes, it's Find excitement them. surrounded by imminent disappointment. <laughs> that's what it that's what it mostly is. Get on the forum at KUMB.com. Come on you irons. <laughs> <laughs>